Well, I'm inviting Miss Hannah to come up here to share as long as you want about your Haiti trip. I will tell you that you will be recorded and you will be plastered all over Facebook. So you need to talk into the mic, not this mic, that mic. Take your time. Give her a hand. All right. Um, well, I survived. That's the good news. <laughs> um, it was definitely an experience. I'm glad I got to go. We um, started the trip, and of course we started with problems, you know how all trips go. We get to Miami, one of the guys ends up sick and has to go to the ER. We don't even know if he's going to be able to go with us. The doctor got in quick enough, so he ended up making it to the airport right as we were getting on the plane. Um, so there's bump in the road number one. But we made it through. We got to Port-au-Prince. And we actually met a guy in the airport that was um, supposed to go to Eastern. I didn't tell you that. Um, but we met a kid there who was like, oh, you go to Eastern. I was supposed to go there. That was really weird. Not that any of you needed to know that. Sorry. <laughs> um, but we uh, flew into port au -Pay, And the first thing they did was throw me on a taxi, which taxis in port au -Pay are motorcycles. <laughs> Um, it was quite frightening. I burnt myself. I might have cried a little. <laughs> um, but we get to Sunlight, and Sunlight is, port au -Pay is like being here. Everybody says hello. You know, they, they, when they see a white person, they yell blanc, which means white person there. So people just come out of the woodworks to see you and there's you know little kids and older people standing on their porch waving at you going blanc blanc wave blanc um so you're trying to wave at everybody and um they were definitely very welcoming there and at sunlight where we sp i spent the first three days um it's a christian-based school it's the only english-speaking school in haiti um they had us in the classrooms, and I worked with the preschoolers. They're pretty cute. Um, they didn't like to speak to me in English, though. They, they wanted me to know Creole, and I didn't, so that was a little bit of a problem. But uh, the one thing with the preschoolers that really got to me was the one day, they do a Bible lesson every day in Creole, but um, the one day they were teaching the preschoolers how to sing How Great Is Our God and Creole, and the fact that preschoolers can understand what that is all about, just really, it really touched me. Um, because as soon as their, their Bible lesson for the day starts up, you know, the whole room goes silent. Everybody's very attentive. You know, I mean, in preschool, that, that is awesome, because you don't get that in preschool. Um, but they knew all the words to how great is our God, and I have a video of it, so when I do my presentation with pictures and videos, I'll play that one for you guys. But, um, and it's really, you could really feel God move in that little preschool room, whereas, I, I don't know, it's just, it was great. Um, and the second night we were there, I found um, in Proverbs, maybe, or Philippians, my bad. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. Um, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. This is the verse that got me through the trip because without um, being able to rely on God and be able to ask him to help me, I, I don't know what I would have done. Um, it's just, I don't know. it's great that we can go to God in prayer and that he'll, he'll always be there to listen to us and to help us. Um, 
but it was um, that's the good part of port pay the bad part is that um, all of your kids in the school are the kids that are that you also see running around on the street with no clothes on when they get home with no shoes <laughs> some of them don't even seem to know if they have some place to live because they're just one day they're over here and the next they're up the block And they, they took us through the poorest parts of Port Pay. And, you know, there are people with no clothes, no shoes. You know, they probably don't have food. They're, um, you know, any water source, they're using it to bathe and to wash their clothes. They have no clean water. And all we have to do is go to a sink and turn it on and our water's clean. I'm sorry. It's kind of sickening to think about what little they have and then come back to the States and see what we have. We're so privileged, and most of the time we aren't even thankful for that. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> um, it was just, it was, it was sickening to come home and see all of this. Um, but we uh, we left port au -Pay and went to Port-au-Prince where they are definitely not as friendly um, all the everybody went in after the earthquake you know and promised them all these great things and oh we're going to be here to help and we're going to change Haiti and they came in and worked for a few days and then they left so they're very hostile towards white people. Um, we weren't allowed to go anywhere in Port-au-Prince without a translator and part of the staff from HOM. So basically we spent most of our time within the same four walls. Um, but the kids, the kids there love everybody. We were sitting on the steps one day, and there were six of us sitting there, and we were mauled by probably 50 or 60 kids, and they want to touch your hair and feel, just feel your arm hair because they, you know, they don't have hair like that. And so they just find it fascinating. <laughs> um, and it, it makes their day just to touch you, you know, just to touch your hand. They're happy, and they can go home with a smile on their face. Um, just to know that you care and that you took the time to sit there with them and play with them makes them happy. And here that doesn't make anybody happy. They're like, oh, you're not going to give me anything. Thanks a lot. You know, so that was, it was um, different. And we, um, we went to City Soleil, which is the poorest part. It's the poorest place in the Western Hemisphere. Everybody lives in tents. Everything is right on top of each other. Um, at the clinics, we, we got to see one clinic in the City Soleil compound, and it was packed every day. People got there at 8 a.m., and they would sit and just wait all day for someone to call their name or hoping that someone would call their name so that they could be seen by the doctor and hopefully be taken care of. And then when they weren't, they would go home, and they would come back at 8 a.m. the next day and do it all over again. Um, they, um, we went to all four of the HOM compounds. There's one in Blanchard, which is the one we were at, City Soleil, Repatriate, and Ewo Beach. And in Ewo Beach, um, I was walking with our translator, Max, and he told us all about um, how people, why the people practice voodoo there. 
it's really, he said it's not because they want to practice it, it's because they feel like they have to. If they practice that, then, you know, they're hoping that they open the door one day and there's money there. They're so, they have no money, and so they just, you know, do whatever they have to to try to provide. Um, they have no clean water. The one clean water source in Ewo Beach when we walked by, there were people bathing in it, washing their clothes, and then, you know, a few steps down, there were people drinking it. It was just, it's a mess. <laughs> to put it lightly, it's a mess. Um, it'll, um, I don't know, definitely to go when you come back to look at things, uh, you know, you don't look at anything the same. I was thankful to be able to get in a car and drive on a paved road. They don't have any paved roads there. Everything is dirt and rock. So driving in, in Port-au-Prince, you drive in tap taps is what they're called. It's a truck with uh, one of those whatever you call it over it and then two benches. And that's what you sit on and you pack everybody in and hope no one falls out and that you don't fall off the bench or something um so as soon as we got to the airport i was just thankful i could get in the car and there was a speed limit and you didn't have to worry about anybody running into you well i mean you do but it's not as not as bad here um you know it's just it'll make you very very thankful for what you have if it doesn't do anything else um I think I'm still trying to process a lot of what I saw. It was um, it's very eye-opening. You, when you think about a third world country, you think like, oh, they did this to themselves, you know? And in reality, we had a history lesson one night. So in reality, over in Haiti, they didn't do this to themselves. This is what they were left with, you know, after the wars and the, you know, their corrupt government. The government doesn't help them at all, you know. Just, they just close their eyes to them and say, as long as we're taken care of, you know, I don't care about the rest of you. And it's, I don't know, it was, it was just the kids, I think, is what really got to me. And there were, um, we were driving in the tap tap one day and there were two little boys. The one couldn't have been over three. The other one couldn't have been more than one. And they were just walking down the road by themselves. You know, no one with them. No one paying attention to them. They were just by themselves walking down the road. And there were, I mean, there were kids everywhere. No clothes, no shoes. I don't know. It was heartbreaking. It was what it was. Um, so, I don't really know what else to say. So I'm just gonna let Pastor Mike talk to you now.